So my name is Anthony Galela, and I am currently the president of Bucephalus Games, a new board game company. Uh, and I was formerly the executive director of Gamma, the Game Manufacturers Association, where I was there for the past seven years. If you're thinking about self-publishing a game, that's fantastic. Um, there are some things that you, you should consider. <coughs> and uh, there are a number of things you should consider. Uh, just a couple of them, uh, some key ones are you want to have more than one game. You want to have a minimum of three games and then a few games also uh, in the design process. So what we call in the pipeline. Okay, now why is that? Um, the reason for that is that there are literally a thousand new games that come out every year. And that's just board games, that's not counting all the other games. Now, that's a huge number, so someone watching your documentary might think, a thousand games? Well, I don't see those. Then you might go to Barnes and & Noble and, and Toys R Us and so forth, and even if you go to a game store, your local friendly, friendly local game store, even there, you don't see a thousand new games in a year. So how could that be possible? I must be exaggerating. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. You're not seeing those games because people aren't buying them. And, and they're being published by folks who, who now have uh, game-shaped furniture in their house because they have got boxes and boxes of unsold stuff. All right. Game stores, toy stores, everybody know this. And they know that a lot of this, uh, this unsellable product comes from uh, folks who think of an idea, have one game in their head. There's an old saying that everybody has a novel in them, right? Everybody has a game in them as well. And so, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, that you have a game in you doesn't mean that you know how to make it marketable, how to make it a tight game, how to write the rules, how to do anything. It doesn't mean that you know anything about the business of games. So um, what game stores will do is they will not, uh, they are conscious and conscientious of this. And so if they see someone with one game, they will immediately think this person is probably um, probably not a professional in this in this industry. They might be a professional in another industry, uh, but they don't know about this industry. And this product is probably going to suck money out of me. Right? Uh, retailers are interested in turn. So <clears throat> what that means is, if they get your product in, they spent maybe ten dollars to buy your game. That ten dollars is doing nothing for them if your game sits there for six months. If it sells every couple of months, then and they sell it for twenty dollars, then they get their twenty dollars back. They keep ten. They buy another buy another one of your games for ten. They put it back on the shelf, and that ten dollars starts making them more money. But if that money is just sitting there, that that money's doing nothing for them, and so they're afraid of that. <clears throat> so. Um, anyone who has one game looks like a vanity press. It looks like someone just had this exciting idea and they want to put it out there and they're not necessarily a game professional and so they don't want to take a risk on that. So if you start your company and uh, you introduce yourself to, uh, to the retail community as someone who has three games, then uh, you're taken more seriously and uh, you are assumed to have had to have put in enough thought and enough time and energy uh, and made yourself professional enough in the industry that making three games makes sense. And if you have a couple more in development that you can show folks at trade shows and so forth, for instance, you go to the Gamma trade show, here's my three games, here are the three others that we're working on, it makes them, retailers have more confidence in you. Um, and you're more likely to, uh, to get into distribution and get into retail stores. <coughs> so that's the number one thing. Um,